Oh, that they're here. Yay. Okay. Let Sorry, y'all. Just... <laughs> oh, my screen. No, you're right on time. This is perfect. So I'm going to tee us up here for our final presentation of Parcel Unpacked 2.0. Uh, it's a bittersweet feeling, but I feel like I couldn't end it off with a better group of people. So before we kick off to exactly what we're going to be covering today, I would love to pass the digital microphone around for everyone here to make their introductions. Uh, and then I'll tee us up exactly for what we're going to cover today. Uh, Tithi, why don't you kick us off for an intro? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Um, so my name is Sithi and uh, I'm a product designer based out of San Francisco. I currently work for a healthcare tech company and essentially my focus uh, as part of my work is thinking about what is it that we're trying to solve for the user and then how does that translate to an effective design or product solution. I'm yep, excited to be talking to you guys today. Jesse? Yeah, hey. Um... I'm Jesse Godfrey. I am the executive creative director for Clemson University's marketing and communications team. I also work uh, with Marketing Rhythm as creative director for um, our email uh, marketing consultancy uh, on that side of things, too. So, yeah, all things creative and design is, is sort of where I like to play. Hey, everyone. I'm Crystal. Uh, currently, I'm a freelance designer, and I work primarily with small businesses. Recently, it's been a, um, a number of engineering firms in California who don't have a designated designer or are design savvy at all. So it's been kind of fun uh, to work with them. And previously, I worked at a web design. Oh, sorry, I worked as a web designer at a small agency uh, where I. Did the thing and wore many hats and had to bridge a lot of gaps. Well, thank you all three of you for, for being here today. Some of you in the audience might be like, wait a second, these people do more than just email. And there is a specific reason why I asked these three individuals here to, to speak on more than just email to close out our event. So as you all are aware, Parcel Unpacked is a virtual event specific to email. But email in many organizations is nested as a channel amongst many, many others, websites, social, product. And although most of this audience here with us today view it as a unique medium, I myself view it as a unique medium, it does pull influence from the digital landscape it sits in, right? Meaning high-level brand standards, inclusive of what's already existing on the website, social, voice and tone. And so I want to close out Parcel Unpacked discussing how you three think about design, knowing that you work with many other mediums as well, with the end goal of creating content for email that is on brand and done efficiently. So I'm excited to hopefully have this broader design-based conversation to spark a few light bulbs with others here today, either in how they can rethink their design process in respect to email or how they can take inspiration for how some of you think about it and maybe learn about a tool they might not be aware of or a process. So what we're gonna do is we have some questions we're gonna work through in a round table format, and then we're actually going to dive into a website and explore how you three designers would think about potentially pulling an email design together. And in the chat, please feel free to tee up questions for the, these three um, designers. Uh, and I would love it to be interactive. We have some questions coming up for the audience as well. So I want to first start with a somewhat of a broad question. We design to communicate valuable information. I think we can all agree on this, whether it's to activate a customer or to convert or sell. It's all about building some type of initial relationship, right? So whether you focus on web design or email or product or social, what do each of you deem as first priority or super important to think about when you're designing. And Crystal, I'll start off with you here. How do you think about what is important when you approach design? Yeah, um, I, coming from a small team, um, typically when I'm asked to design like either a website or like an email, I'm provided some copy. It's we don't have a copywriter, so I'll start with that. And I I often struggle with like 
turning copy into a design because it's like, what do I do with this giant paragraph that you gave me? So um, just from like observing and researching different websites when I'm doing my design process, I, I've observed like websites, they kind of target users that are in different levels of like market awareness. So uh, users either have no idea what this product or service is. Um, the other level is they're aware of it, but they want to learn more. And then the third one would be they know exactly what they need to like purchase. Um, for example, like paint for like a jet, like I need this specific number. I just need to buy it. So when I'm designing something, I work within that frame and, um, yeah, the copy is just really important. And because I'm not a copywriter, just creating guardrails for myself, I'm able to create different distinct designs. And one of those um, levels of awareness are going to fall under the specified target audience. Um, yeah, I'll jump in. I think for me, uh, one of the most important things to think about is, is the context. Um, especially as you're looking at all the different mediums that you're going to, you know, communicate in. Certainly the brand is always present in content design, whether it's an email or on the web or on social. Um, but I think, you know, it's important to remember that it should always be contextual to where that customer is, whether that's on a timeline, if you're talking to them, you know, in real time on social or through email campaigns or in context of their customer journey and the point they're at, which, you know, you might be doing through uh, email automation. It's just, making the presentation of your brand and, and your content uh, as contextual and kind of real time as you can is, is going to just reinforce that you're sort of um, adjacent to them on this life journey and, and that you're kind of there to, to um, be the brand kind of in their pocket. If that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I, I agree with what uh, Crystal and Jesse said here. Our primary goal, like you mentioned, um, Naomi, is to like, activate the user uh, and to convey valuable information effectively. And the best way to do that is to establish a meaningful connection with the user. Like, as we know, there's so much information coming to us from all sides. We have a lot of information on our phones. We are looking at information around us. And the best way to captivate a member's attention is to basically establish a meaningful connection. And there's two ways that we can, there's two, two ways in which we do this. So the first and the most important one is actually understanding what is it that the user is trying to do based on where they are in their journey. So actually figuring out what is the main thing that they're trying to achieve at this point in time and understanding their behaviors and preferences there. And then as support, to blend together the existing brand language, uh, like things like visuals, copy, et cetera, uh, that actually serve the member in achieving that, uh, like that connection. I love those insights. Thank you for sharing. When does it kind of change your way of thinking what you deem as important? does it apply to all types of design or do you need to change the way you're thinking when it comes to email design specifically or social or website design is there different ways you think about these specific channels email being the the first and foremost crystal i'll pass it to you um i think focusing on copy is definitely something that carries over uh what i would change though is like how to make it more concise because we mm. the email has to be very concise and um, effective. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah uh, exactly. So I often really, whenever I'm designing, I like thinking about email as it falls into the model of like the entire ecosystem of the product, right? So mm -hmm. a good way to think about it and a very simple way in which I, which I just apply for all of my designs is thinking of like the bite, snack and meal model. So if you look at like a push notification that you receive or like a, or a piece of mail, physical mail that you receive, if that's like the bite, which is the smallest piece of information, what that's redirecting you to is the snack. And in my mind, an email is kind of like a snack where you have some more information, 
but you don't want the user journey to end at the snack, right? The eventual goal is basically to take them to your product, to actually like give them more information uh, or have them sign up or learn more about a particular product. So what we're trying to do is redirect them to the meal. So always think about email in the context of this larger ecosystem. Like what is the snack trying to do? It's trying to hook you into wanting to know more about the meal. Um, so especially when thinking about an email, thinking about that model is often super effective. Yeah, great points. I think for me, you know, I, I mentioned context to the previous question. I think that's, it's it's always important to think about the context in which, you know, the brand is speaking to their customer. Um, but I think the, the way you execute that is different from channel to channel. So, you know, I think about web content that can tend to be more evergreen, you, you know, uh, consumers might just be browsing, they might just happen upon your site. Whereas, you know, social content needs to be more engagement driven, the, pre the primary goal being that they're engaging with you around that content. Um, so for me to email, needs to feel um, as timely and intentional uh, more so than any, any of these others. I, I like to think about a campaign or an automation that we're designing um, and, and how we can visualize that and bring that to life in the unique context of like exactly where that customer is encountering, encountering that piece of, of branding. Sorry, I couldn't find the unmute button. Um, <laughs> now, this is this is a spicy one, and I am so excited to hear all of your thoughts on this. There are so many roles internally that touch email, right? Copywriters, marketers, designers, developers, I don't know, CMOs. We've lightly mentioned the limited support that email can have compared to web design and, and other fun avenues. And email design is a medium that comes with so many intricacies because of the lack of standardization it has across email clients. For those that work in teams or maybe something has been designed that is supported on web that maybe isn't supported on email, how do you prefer to work with these intricacies that are flagged? Who, in your opinion, owns this type of knowledge? Jesse, do you want to start us off? Yeah, yeah, sure. I mean, I think everybody owns it. Um, from my perspective, coming from a design background, I've always felt that regardless of the channel you're working in or, or whatever the project is, you know, it's it's sort of your job as the designer to become the expert on that thing and, and understand all the intricacies of those channels. And um, I think that's definitely the case with email, it's just like, you know, any channel that you might be designing for, knowing the ins and outs of email clients and how, you know, designs will or, or maybe won't translate to code. All of that to me is the designer's job to, to be an expert on. But ideally, you're also getting really strong insights from your marketing and strategy partners as well um, on how that landscape's changing and, you know, new things that you need to know and consider as you're uh, building out your designs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. I think for an effective email campaign, there isn't one person who's in charge of, of the approach. I, I do think it needs to be a collaborative team approach. And exactly what you said, Jesse, I think every every role has an expertise. Like when I think of the design role, the, the things that we're really good at is thinking about what is effective content, what is the actual visual brand language, like all of the all of the minutiae versus like when I think of a developer's role, they're experts in like, how do we make this really responsive? So I think working together to to play on each person's strength uh, would lead to a pretty effective email campaign. Um, and as as an additional layer to that, I think regular training, having designated mm -hmm. knowledge owners who are always updated about a particular email client, like comprehensive documentation on what are things that we're currently thinking about, just like help help in creating in creating this, and always adding rigorous testing to like have a continuous improvement mindset um, as mm -hmm. to that. Yeah. yeah, I agree with everyone. Um, ideally, everyone should uh, own the knowledge. Um, coming from a small team, I didn't exactly have that experience, but I definitely <laughs> felt uh, like what Jesse said, like I felt like I had to learn everything. Um, so if I needed to like, needed coding help uh, and I had to add this, ask the dev, 
typically they wouldn't, wouldn't be on the project. So there's a lot of like context catching up and the process felt really bumpy. So um, yeah, I feel like it should be a collaborative collaborative process so that there's less friction. Mm -hmm. The best kind of teams are ones that are open to knowledge and for someone flagging, hey, I saw this article, looks like Gmail is no longer supporting GIFs. If that's the case, hopefully it's never the case. I just lied that it's never going to happen. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah, but, for a second there, I was like, wait, <laughs> what? I know. <laughs> I'm sharing it with you now. Yeah, the best kind of teams are ones where you feel comfortable having an open communication right back and forth to be able to see, hey, can we test this? I have a strategy I wanna try. Oh, that sounds supported. Okay, let me adjust. I yeah. think team dynamics can shut down really quickly when that environment isn't fostered. So mm -hmm. I am happy to hear that you all think that everyone should own a little bit of email knowledge because it's so true. <laughs> and for a lot of organizations on the topic of design and ownership, I think design can be classified as successful if the designs themselves have been done efficiently and they're on brand. Looking at this question through the email lens with your backgrounds working across multiple challenge channels, sorry, what efficiencies do you recommend teams lean into when given the task of designing for email? And Jesse, I'll get you to start this off since I think you work with email probably day in, day out. Um, so yeah. Hear you. For sure. Um, I mean, I think the efficiencies that I found over time is really on the front end of a project, especially when you're onboarding a new client or, or you're working with the brand for the first time. Doing a real deep dive in all the digital channels of the brand that the brand's already in and finding uh, ways that you can um, repurpose content that already exists, whether that's content on the web or content on social. Um, you know, finding ways to recycle and kind of use those content um, opportunities in the email space. And then using the foundations of the brand on those platforms, if they're more built out than email um, on web and on social, you know, to start to build out a design system for the brand in email, figuring out what pieces exist already um, in those spaces and how can I make that work in an email form as a, as a component or a block and you know in an email template that i'm that i'm going to use and recycle over and over again and um specifically for building email one great tool that i've found that i want to share with everybody is um, a figma plugin called html to design you just mm -hmm. punch in a url and it strips a web page and converts it to a figma um, frame just like that it's magic mm -hmm. um even you know the svgs and everything on the website are, are still svgs in figma it's it's beautiful but you know essentially taking the web presence, converting that, and then starting to assess that, pick it apart, split it out, and start rebuilding it um, in a way that could work um, in sort of the flow of an email. It's a really quick way to jumpstart some, um, some brand components that you're going to use to kind of scale up your email. Yeah. My world, contrary to Jesse's, uh, is thinking about the product as a whole, not focusing on the email as one component but i think the the advice still remains the same i think to be most effective and efficient i think like relying on modular design principles just really allows for quicker iterations and also like creating a, a campaign that feels super cohesive so i think how i go about approaching design again very relevant for email is actually maintaining a library of pre-approved visual assets. So these are just like blocks that can, once you have those building blocks, it's so easy to think about like, okay, how do we how do we rearrange this information? Or how do we modify each each component or maybe the, the language or the visual, like the icons, the, the images, it's like the smaller things. But once you have the big building blocks to start with, it just makes the process so much faster. Um, and it's also equally important that, to have an analytics integration because like, as we know, design is ever evolving. So thinking about like what, how do we on, like optimize it on the go? What are we learning and how do we modify each component based on what we learn? Uh, just like makes the whole process feel a lot more efficient. Uh, I think Jesse brushed up on this earlier, but um, developing an understanding for the tool you're using so for example, like when I work in web and say the client is using Squarespace and I want to, I design this nice tab where you click on it, does a certain effect. But um, when I try to build it in Squarespace, it's actually really complicated and I don't, I'm not a developer. 
So um, it would be the same for like MailChimp or something. So like if you design a Figma and you create this really nice like header, it has the H1 in it, and then you go and build it and you realize that like you can't have the H1 in there, you, you gotta have the text. Mm -hmm. So you would be backtracking and yeah, mm -hmm. just like being familiar with the tool and knowing how you can build something would make it more efficient. I love that. So now we have our fun interactive bit. Let me switch over. So this is an exercise that I think is gonna be really fun where we can look at a website and talk about how we would potentially approach doing design for it. Give me one second to get this website up. And don't worry everyone, I've cleared this with the team themselves. So. If anyone from Moonjuice is in the audience and is like, wait a second, I didn't know you were going to talk about my website. I did clear it with someone from your team, so don't be surprised. What I would love to do here is take Moonjuice as an example of a product that is direct to consumer, sold online, but also offers a subscription piece. So anyone in kind of the tech or SaaS world, we all have the same goal of trying to win back month over month people, right? So I'd love to hear, looking at this website that has existing design, has existing fonts, colors, typography, layout, um, let's talk about this design. How might it translate over to email? How would you, if you were handed Moon Juice as a potential client or customer, approach designing for email? Jesse, do you want to start us off? Sure. Yeah. I mean, sort of, uh, sort of bouncing off the the last um, insight that I gave there, I think assessing the design system that's in place on the web here and starting there. So, you know, just at a glance, I would look at what are the what are the type pairings that they're using here and how might that translate? Um, how, you know, how are buttons treated? Um, it looks like they've got like a secondary or tertiary font happening in this little like uh, brand values ribbon there. Um, that to me is like a perfect element that you could just take as is, or, you know, maybe only have one or two of those statements um, in a ribbon that you could build into a template. So, you know, starting to break apart this system and rebuild it um, in a way that's going to work for email and, and trying to be as true to the brand expression here as you can, but still optimizing it for the email space. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anyone else have some thoughts? Yeah, yeah. So I think I agree. I think I'd start by thinking about what is the brand language and what is the main thing that the the product is trying to communicate. Uh, I also like after I th after I look at the specifics, I basically think about what is it that the product is trying to make me feel. Like here, the the entire vibe of this product is like making you feel very relaxed and something that feels like a very premium product based on the imagery that they've used and something that you use like at night as part of your like bedtime routine. So I think translating that and thinking about what is the member's journey? At what point in time would they want to engage with this product, right? So mm. maybe it's a member or maybe maybe it's a user who has trouble sleeping. Maybe it's a user who's trying to just like find healthier alternatives to like current, like cu current their current nighttime routine. So actually thinking about what is it that the user is trying to do when they're coming to this product and then thinking about what should the email say in context to that. So if it's someone who's like trying to be more healthy, then that's that's the that's the lens through which you would like design that email outreach campaign. If it's someone who comes to this product looking at like maybe addiction, like th then you look at that lens through which you would like mm -hmm. design the the email campaign. So again, thinking about the member's journey and at what point in time do they land on this product? What is it that they're trying mm -hmm. to achieve for themselves? Uh, would be the next step after thinking about the the design system. I love Just a good a conversation around segmentation because that's exactly <laughs> it, right? <laughs> Oh, just to jump back in real quick, one one thing that I that also stood out to me here in the top nav is is the that learn page. Mm. Just the idea that there's this wealth of knowledge that this brand might have on on you know their product and their kind of industry vertical, and that's just like right for the picking of like really great email content that you can layer in over time. That's not just here's our product, buy it, but here's knowledge and here's you know here's ingredients and here's a, a better way to understand um 
you know, this product. Yeah. That's a great call out. Now, if we were looking at, looking at this, uh, like Moon Juice product through the lens of designing an email for a specific purpose, let's say a goal of conversion or welcoming or win back. This is where I'm going to call on the audience. I know there are some familiar faces uh, in the audience. Logan, KJ, Alex, if anyone's there and we were to start to think about designing, designing an email, is there a goal that you would want to set? Win back, getting someone to refer a friend, someone shout out a random goal. We will discuss how we would potentially approach email design for that one goal. Welcoming. Be gentle. <laughs> <laughs> Don't give us the hardest one. <laughs> Anyone? Bueller? Bueller? Browse abandon. Abandon cart. Perfect. Let's start with those. So someone mm. who has either abandoned something, they had the intention of coming in and purchasing, mm. and then they just disappeared. What would potentially entice them or how would you approach an email design to capture that? Mm. Mm. I think I would first um, analyze like the brand language and the tone mm -hmm. that uh, Moon Juice is writing in just to kind of give myself context of, on how I would speak to the user. That's, that's good. Yeah. I think for me, you know, if I, if I know what they were looking at and, and say, maybe there's one, or, one, two, three products they were looking at in a particular category, um, of the product portfolio, then I might would dial in on that and say, okay, you know, if it's skincare, um, here's, here's not just the product that you were shopping for, but also mm -hmm. here's why skincare is important. Here's mm -hmm. the way we differentiate, you know, ourselves from other skincare products. And, mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, backing again, bringing that value from a knowledge standpoint alongside the product. So you're, you're adding value that way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love that. I also see that uh, Moon Juice has this option of take a quiz. So I'm guessing based on that, that like what, what they're trying to do is really personalize each product for that particular person, uh, especially if they've already taken the quiz. So I think leaning back into mm -hmm. why that product is going to be really useful for the members. So maybe highlighting the top three, top, top three value props. So maybe even linking them to the quiz again, like, oh, hey, mm -hmm. maybe find what you were looking for or maybe this was not the right product for you is there would you like to tell us more or is there something else mm -hmm. that you for which might be in the similar category another reason someone might abandon the cart is because it's just too expensive for them so maybe mm -hmm. leaning that uh, could be another way to approach it where you you say that maybe this package doesn't work for you like thinking through the language of course but like maybe mentioning that this package if this package doesn't work for you we have this other sample package that might mm -hmm. be for you and again leveraging some of this imagery that we that we have here that this is how it would make you feel just give, give it a try uh so like thinking through why a member might have abandoned the cart and then leveraging the current the current style to kind of hone that in yeah yeah and then there's the whole can of worms that is discount codes i see on the website you know there's the get 20 or give 20 get 20 um, so maybe if they haven't used that type of discount code previously, that's something that they might want to lean into. So thank you for sharing your insights on this. I love a good like design breakdown. I think they're quite fun. Yeah. So let me navigate back to some of our questions here. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm keen to hear from you three, where do you look for inspiration when it comes to design? Is it people in the industry? Is it websites, newsletters, hard copy books? What do you try and stay on top of to remain inspired? Uh, I mean, for me, certainly really good emails is always a go-to just to see, um, you know, not just, what are what are some really great designs and some you know some trying to identify some trends but also um you know from a strategic standpoint too seeing sort of the the thought process maybe that was behind some of these emails sort of in the same way that we just did with moon juice 
and, and kind of reverse engineering, like how could this work for maybe the brand or the client that I'm working for? Um, so that's a big one for me. Um, I think I also like really like looking outside of the industry vertical that I'm designing for. So looking at something totally different in a totally different lane yeah. and seeing how they're operating and, and trying to distill that down into, okay, what what's the strategy there? How can I apply that and, and do that uniquely here? Um, and then I think just my own inbox. I just, you know, the, the further I get in my email design journey, the judgier I get of, of the <laughs> products that, that I personally consume and like um, make my decisions based on email design only, which is probably not smart. It's relatable. <laughs> <laughs> um, as a product design nerd, I think like, everything feels like an inspiration. Like when you're mm-hmm. walking, treat like you have hoardings you have signages and or you see print media you have apps you have websites so there's so much information all around us and I think when I look for inspiration what I think about is how did that make me feel like I I passed by something did it make me want to stop and learn more about it did the colors just feel so engaging that it made it feel like super fresh uh, did the language feel like they were really drawing me in? So I think the, the world around us is is an inspiration uh, and it's exciting as a designer. But there are so many sites available where you can actually look up really cool design. Um, I, I have some of these links on here and I'm, Naomi, I'm sure you'll share share them with the people, uh, with the audience later. But like a couple that I'd really like to point out is there's a cool site called Mobin. Uh, it basically has like, a repository of all existing iOS app screens. So if you're trying to like look up how does Spotify do it, rather than having to go through your app, which as designers, we do a lot, you can open an app and take million screenshots and add it to your Figma. It's just available, like where you can just type the name of a particular product and it'll give you all the screens as a reference or inspiration. Um, another great one is Dribble. It's It just has a lot of like passion projects from people around the world. And people are trying some really crazy things on there. So if you're thinking about how do I create a really effective drop down, just like try, type drop down on there and you'll see a million ways in which people are creating a drop down. So there's, there's just a lot of really awesome inspiration sites uh, that we can reference. And the last one that I'd like to mention is like chat GPT. I am not that great at writing copy. And as designers, we always have to think about copy. So thinking about like, this is kind of what I want to say here. And then relying on chat GPT to create different versions of it. Maybe saying, make it more formal, make it more informal, make it shorter, make it longer. It's it's just been super, super helpful. Um, so chat GPT, unlikely inspiration, but it's great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I look for inspiration um, online. Uh, my favorite website is awards with three W's mm. and a lot of the work that gets submitted on there is like really like a usability nightmare, but in terms of like <laughs> creativity there, it's really, really abundant of I don't know, people are cr- trying crazy things like putting 3d models in the web browser. And, um, yeah, I think it's just interesting to see what people can do in the web and creatively it's, uh, where, yeah, you can find a lot of interesting ideas and things you didn't uh, think of trying. Mm -hmm. Uh, I also have a designated email specifically for newsletters, so it doesn't like spam Mm -hmm. my inbox. So I have um, kind of like my own database of newsletters from like design websites. Um, Yeah, it's just kind of become my own library of like emails if I ever need to reference. I have the exact same. I love my little dedicated Google inbox for all my favorite newsletters. It always runs out of storage because I'm just constantly using it as not how I should a regular email inbox, but those are great. I'm sure all of like the email designers that specifically only work on email as a dedicated channel are crying inside at the lack of potential um, for client support, (laughs) depending on what uh, email clients they are working with compared to the limitless potential of web. But as we wrap up here, I would love to hear from each of you. Do you have any parting words of advice for those that are juggling multiple channels that they need to design for? I think for me, you know, just backing out of whatever channel, you know, the project you're working on and and thinking about the brand experience overall as sort of the suite of channel agnostic like touch points 
um, is a really helpful way to to assess how you how you express the brand in all these different places. So, you know, for example, if you're launching a new product, um, how are you how are you doing that on the web for you know maybe splashing on the homepage versus how are you introducing that product on on social or um, in an email campaign? How can the experience be unique to the touch point, but still you know on brand, still consistent and accurate, and and all of those things. Yeah, absolutely. I think if you have your product or your site or your website, it's already like you already have everything that you need to start with. You already know what that base is. And essentially, you're trying to create elements that fit in effectively. But starting from your main product, I think, is is the way to go. And another thing that I'd really like to stress on is just like quick and dirty testing. I do that so much as part of my day to day. There's so many awesome sites, like many sites which are even free, available to test. Like one that we use commonly is called user testing. It recruits members for representative users for you. You're able to do like unmoderated testing. You're able to actually like sit in front of people. And maybe if you have three versions of your email, just like show it to people because there's only so much we can decide as one designer. So mm. lean out to into the world and actually ask people how they feel. So quick and dirty testing as much as you can. Uh, I'm not waiting for like the implemented version and learning after people actually interact with it. So the more t testing, the better. I think the designs are. Yeah. Yeah. Um, since my design is so driven by words uh, my parting advice is going to be word related so um, if you don't have like a designated copywriter like i mentioned before and you're just like a one person design team um i would recommend reading a lot of different genres mm -hmm. um from like literary fiction to poetry just so like maybe you got this email and the h1 is not sounding right um i think like having just read a lot of different types of books will get your creative juices flowing. I love that. I love a little bias towards action, as you mentioned, Tiffy, right. just getting things out there, getting things going. How I'm trying to live my life. Well, I appreciate all three of you so much for, for joining in today. Um, if you want to follow along with any of these three, Tippy, where can people find you? Do you have a website? Do you prefer people bombarding you with LinkedIn DMs? This question will go to all three of you, but how can people potentially get in touch? Yeah, LinkedIn is perfect. Um, I'm responsive on LinkedIn. So please, please feel free to reach out uh, via LinkedIn. Um, I also have a website just by my name. Um, so that is a great channel as well. And also happy to share my email. So please reach out to Naomi and uh, yeah, just looking forward to chatting with you guys. So yeah, same here. Uh, I'm, I'm on LinkedIn, Austin. So yeah, definitely reach out if, uh, if you're interested in connecting. Same here, LinkedIn would work for me. Message me, I don't have a lot of friends. <laughs> <laughs> what amazing parting words. You have the whole community here now with you. So that is, it's perfect. You're going to have all the friends in the world after this. <laughs> well, thank again, thank you. Yeah, thank you both uh, or all three of you so much. Um, I am so grateful that you joined to close out Parcel Unpacked round two. And I can't thank you enough. So I'll send you three to the wing. Um, and I hope you three have a fantastic rest of your day. Thank you so much. Well, thank, thank you. you. Bye. <laughs> Okay, off and I'll send you and there you go. And slowly but surely, bye. Well, thank you everyone who is still in the audience here with me today. This has been such a phenomenal two days. I am so excited to sit on the couch for an hour after this and have no anxiety over hosting an online event. Uh, and then tomorrow dive right into the recordings. So I do have one question, favor, link to ask of all of you. I have a post event survey as one always does. If you have feedback to share, primarily uh, I'm curious, you know, can I get your feedback to convince my CMO that we should host another event, an in-person event? If you want me to do that, put it in the feedback uh, and that's it. That's all she wrote. 
I am so excited to hear from you what you thought of the event, what you want to see next year. And again, just thank you for being such a phenomenal and engaging community. So I'm going to close it out now. And I hope everyone has an amazing 2024 and takes all of this as inspiration into their strategy for the future. Bye.